you, you have to um, be aware that if they've gotten, let's say you're a financial advisor, if they've gotten 10 connection requests from other financial advisors who all end up spamming the crap out of them, do you think that they're going to want to accept another connection request from another financial advisor? Like you just shared a ton around how to message. Can you talk a little bit around what they should do with their profile? Because this is something I know you have a really different take on, but it's something that I've seen a lot of people have challenges around. How do I build out a linked out profile? How do I make it so that people actually read what's there? What do you recommend that people do? 100% 100% man. Um, and you know, there's a lot of, uh, I disagree with a lot of things, but it's more like m- for, for my clients, what is being taught most of the time isn't, isn't going to apply to them because the type of clients that I, I like to work with, they're usually the type of clients that kind of like when I was a financial advisor, I wanted to fill my pipeline but I also had to have a type of relationship with my prospect and with my client where I was the authority, I was the advisor. And there's not everyone cares about that. There are some people that are obviously doing the guerrilla marketing thing and, and being very salesy on LinkedIn, but for a very high end clientele, people selling really expensive things or people that are coaches, consultants, anything like that, they want to be able to maintain that authority while also having a full pipeline. And so a lot of those markets are actually afraid to prospect because they assume that you have to, uh, you have to uh, turn in your authority card in order to fill your pipeline. And, uh, and we've, we've kind of cracked the code there. So when it comes to your profile, you have to keep in mind when when they're going to see your profile and put yourself in the shoes of, of the person that's, that you're prospecting with. And you have to keep in mind that there's other people that sell the same thing that you sell. And they're also sending connection requests to the same audience that you're targeting. It's a big world out there. And there there's probably at least 10 other people that have tried at least depending on the industry that you're in. So you, you have to, um, be aware that if they've gotten, let's say you're a financial advisor, if they've gotten 10 connection requests from other financial advisors who all end up spamming the crap out of them, do you think that they're going to want to accept another connection request from another financial advisor? Apply the same thing to a LinkedIn expert. I, I get, I get, I get hit up by LinkedIn experts all the time because their targeting isn't good. Um, and, and it's like every day, three to five messages. Um, and, and I will say like, we have people that are very high up prospects of ours. Um, we, we like recorded their reactions, um, when we did zoom calls with them, they're like, Jimmy, I get hit up by three to five people that do the same thing that you do every single day. They solve the same problem that you solve. You're the only person I've ever responded to. And a lot of that happens like on the back end from how we reach out. But if we had another like vendor type profile, another salesy type profile, I wouldn't have ever gotten the chance to send the audio message or that video message. Right. So this is the thing that, um, it's kind of like the, the Trojan horse profile, right. Where it's not going to give ourselves away right at the very beginning. They're not going to stop us at the gate. Okay. So I want you guys to keep that in mind. Your profile doesn't have to answer every question about what you do, which is, contrary to what most people would just assume, right? You want to like give everything away of what you do. So when, so people know very clearly, but if you follow my process, it's not as important for you to, to give everything away. Uh, I always tell people position your, um, your LinkedIn profile, uh, with two words. One is as an authority, if you can, if you can show any kind of social proof or that you being interviewed for something or anything where there's an appearance of you have information that people want that makes you look like a more valuable person, then that's a really good thing to showcase on your profile. Um, or, or, or any kind of just, um, make it easy for the person to say yes to you. Make sure that they feel like they're not the first person on planet earth that has ever said yes to you when they accept your connection request. Right? So, uh, keep that in mind when it comes to the other one is authenticity. That's the other A word for you. Authenticity is most people are completely missing out on this on LinkedIn. But I, I talk a lot about humanizing your LinkedIn profile. So I, like 
some how do you, some go ahead. How do you do that? Because I agree. Right. I think I think that is like the number one thing. No, everybody wants to appear professional. Nobody wants to do business with somebody that's right. super cold and personal. They want to do pers- They want to do business with a human being, somebody that is that they know, like, and trust. So, how do you do that? What's the yeah. The, the professional headshots are, are, are super bland to me. So uh, there's really four key areas on your profile that you can showcase authority um, or authenticity. And at the very top of your profile is your banner or your background picture, right? The thing behind your profile picture. And a lot of people have a hard time finding the right measurements for that. Real quick a piece of advice is go to canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com and um, type in LinkedIn and you'll see that in the search, there'll be a thing that's a LinkedIn banner and just make, have a picture that'll fit to those measurements. And that's how you create a good LinkedIn banner. That's, there you go. But, uh, in your LinkedIn banner, again, are we trying to, de- are, do we have opportunity to demonstrate authority or, uh, authenticity authority might be you speaking in front of a stage of people, right? Um, or, or it might be you with just a crowd of people that are visually endorsing you, right? That, like they are interested in what you have to say, or they like you. There's some uh, feeling of that. Um, a picture of authenticity might be your family portrait. I saw a guy had a picture today. It was like him and his kids. And it was a funny picture of his kids, like being really funny. And I liked the guy a lot more. I couldn't, I had a hard time. He was a competitor. I had a hard time looking at this guy as a competitor. And, and I wanted to you know, actually like extend a handout and say, Hey man, how can we collaborate? Because um, I like, I saw he's a real human being, right? It humanized him. I really like that. So uh, in your banner, you can, again, demonstrate authority or authenticity. Same thing in your profile picture. That's a second area. Um, Again, you speaking on stage, you explaining something. And because that's a much smaller picture, you don't even need to be explaining something to an audience of a thousand people, right? It could be literally like I'm looking around outside my window right now. There's uh, four people in, five people in sight. And I can say, hey, guys, um, let me just like tell you um, a, a story of, uh, you know, what happened on my 10th birthday. And, and someone take a picture of me as I'm, as I'm explaining it to you. And boom. LinkedIn picture, right? So you can, you can fake it till you make it with the authority thing if you have to. But again, I, I've had other clients where the, um, it, they chose authenticity in their profile picture. It was him giving his son a piggyback ride. Um, and, or so, again, family is a great thing to use. People have used dogs before and stuff like that. A picture of them laughing at something is a great thing, it, but it does need to be a high quality picture so that people um, uh, uh, see that you represent quality at the very least. Um, The third area is your headline. The headline is the thing either next to or below your name on your profile. And most people think that it's the same thing as a job title. It's not a job title. It has a different name. It's called a headline. And so again, most people just say, you know, sales rep at whatever company or, or whatever it is. But I think this is a really good opportunity for you to find a creative way to describe what you do. And if it's funny, even better. There's a guy in Charlotte who uh, he's a photographer and his headline says, I shoot people for a living. And I thought that was awesome. It stood out from everyone else. I've never sent a photographer a connection request before, but I definitely sent him one because I thought that was so cool. And, uh, but that's just a really great way for you to stand out. If you have a viral kind of headline or, um, uh, and if, if you can't find a way to be creative in describing what it is that you do or a byproduct of the result that you bring people, um, in, in a fun or creative way, something that's going to stand out from everyone else, then, um, you can just double down again on the authority thing, right? If, if you're the founder of a cool sounding company, you can kind of flex that in your, uh, in your headline and it's going to look pretty good still, right? People are going to take you more seriously. Um, the fourth part is your about section. And this is where, you know, Steve mentioned something that's really important is, how do you actually get people to read, want to read about what it is that you do? Because what most people do in their about section is just a, either like, a, most of the time it's like a brag sheet of either why they're the best at selling what they sell or why their company is the best at selling what they sell or, or executing their services. And the fact is that the way that most people are writing it, like it doesn't get people to want to read it. And Steve knows this better than most people on planet earth that there's a really good format for getting people to actually read um, what it is that you do. It's called story selling. 
And in LinkedIn, there's a, there's a pretty simple format that you can use for this. Uh, I just have like three parts to it. And the first part is a hook. So in this case, your hook might be uh, a significant life event. So, um, you know, my wife, Morgan, she actually put the, um, she put her quote of, of the letter that she got in the mail. It was her rejection letter into nursing school. She quoted it. And then, um, and then she uh, explained like, um, she interpreted it. Like she said, like, you're not good enough. You'll never be a nurse, you know, things like that. And then, um, and the, the second part of, of this is, is the body. So you got the hook and then the body and the body, you just give context to the hook. So she said something like, you know, most people don't know this about me, but I actually had to apply into nursing school four times before I was accepted. And, you know, this is something I, I felt really embarrassed about. And she just kind of explains the hook in the body of, of what was going on in that period of time in her life. And at the end, you just bridge the hook to the mission that you're on now, how it connects to what, why you do what you do. And for her, she just kind of explained the lessons that she learned and how that sets her apart from, she, she wouldn't word it like this because she's not like competitive in this way, but like really this is how people um, who, who mattered viewed it is like how it sets her apart from every other nurse out there and the mission that she's on her why of why she is a nurse and why she is doing the job that she has. And you can, you can correlate that as well. And the more bold you are, the more you're separating yourself from the pack. There's a guy who quoted the text that he got um, when his friend uh, told him that his best friend died. And, uh, and he, he, and he like talked about that. And, um, you know, uh, Justin, our chief experience officer talks about, um, like the last thing that his mom told him before she passed away, uh, was like, you know, like people go deep, you, people can talk about when they got fired from a job, just something that the more embarrassing it is actually, the more you're going to stand apart from everyone else. Cause no one, most people, especially on LinkedIn, you know, Instagram, you're the hottest version of yourself. Well, LinkedIn, you're usually like the most professional, fake professional version of yourself, right? It's all BS most of the time. Um, and, and the more you can be raw and real in that about section, the more you're going to connect to people. Morgan, just so you guys know, she was a nursing student at the time. She had C-level executives of different hospitals reaching out to her, asking for meetings to convince her to work at their hospital. That does not happen. It doesn't have like, that's not how it works. Um, and uh, like CEOs are not doing that, but they would see your profile and they would connect with her immediately. She also had other people that were uh, in her field that like let her know that how much what she put in her, um, in her about section meant to them and how they relate to her story. Like if she wanted to, and this isn't, I don't think it's her style. She could create like a nursing, like revolution, like tribe thing and you know, whatever she could go for it. But um have, have a story to use a story selling format to explain what it is that you do and why it is that you do. It's, it's a I hate to be cliche, but it's the, it's the whole Simon Sinek thing of selling why you do instead of what you do. Are you looking to scale your business, but trying to figure out how to get your message across? Well, go to storyselling.how to grab my free course that will show you how to discover everything that you need to build your business through stories. These stories work, whether it's in social media, email, or public speaking, there are five core stories that you'll learn. You'll be able to use all of them by the time you're done with this course. Again, that is storyselling.how. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to tune in next time.